My name is Ron Allum. I really got involved in scuba diving and later cave diving. And I joined university caving clubs and diving clubs. And I was always, I suppose, going on expeditions and diving with you know, scientists or academics for science. And that gave me opportunities to go to some very special places because of you know, their research, it would open doors. I decided to join uh, a documentary film team as a sound recordist, come you know, underwater cameraman, come technician, come repairer, come maker of equipment for the expeditions uh, that we were to do. And uh, the expeditions took us to the Galapagos, Costa Rica, the Caribbean. We did stories in Cuba, Mexico. We did a lot of cave diving in uh, the Yucatan. I was finally headhunted by James Cameron and that led to um, my deep sea career, I guess. I think the highlight of um, what I did for Jim uh, was that he was asked to do a, a Discovery Channel special and they wanted Jim to do a live telecast from Titanic. I got a phone call in Australia and was asked to go over to the US and this question was posed to me. Could we do an outside broadcast from a Russian mere submersible from the Titanic? And we discussed it for a few meetings, a few hours, and basically we decided to do it. I didn't get home for 11 months uh, during that time. You know, there's a lot of trial and error, but um, uh, we eventually had a system that worked. And when the day came to do the live telecast, we actually pulled it off. I was starting to get a fairly good rapport with, with Jim. Yeah, you'd always discuss about you know, your next project and the Mariana Trench always came up. The Mariana Trench had not been dived since the 60s. Jim didn't believe that it would be impossible and uh, I suppose it was Jim's ideal that um, you know, he would have a submersible that could do the Mariana Trench. But not only that, if you could do the trench, you could do, go anywhere in the world. When I started working on Deep Sea Challenger, there's many, many uh, challenges. It had to be big enough for Jim's frame to climb inside of and operate the submarine. Deep Sea Challenger's vertical design was Jim's idea from the onset. You know, the, the concept, it's like putting a skyrocket into space. Well, Jim had the same idea, but going to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. If it were more a uh, rocket shape, it could descend to the bottom. But he also studied the strange little animal that swims vertically, but it swims around the bottom uh, in a really strange manner. And I've seen one or two myself. So he required us to have horizontal thrusters so he could navigate across the seafloor, you know, when he got to the bottom of a trench. You just don't just want to sit in one spot. So he came up with this concept of this fish-shaped design. It was speedy to get down. It could manoeuvre along the bottom without having to change orientation and waste energy and time doing that. And then when it came time for ascent, again, it was like a skyrocket that would go back to the surface. So yeah, it was novel for a, a normal submersible design. Deep Sea Challenger to me is, yeah, it is really a, a monument to engineering and science. I believe we came up with new methods of doing deep sea exploration that are now becoming commonplace you know, in the industry. It did show a lot of people that man can get back uh, under the water safely. We went to extraordinary efforts to uh, try to meet pressure vessel standards for the hull itself. Yeah, quite excited that uh, Deep Sea Challenger is coming yeah, back to Australia. It was designed and built in Leichhardt. Its first dive was in Garden Island in Sydney Harbour. Yeah, I'm glad to see it back and I'm sure it's going to attract a, a fairly good audience and I think there is a lot of interest in subsea yeah, exploration.